Hi guys, welcome to Linksa YouTube channel. My name is Ramishra and I am your online instructor. So what's in this video? In this video, I will tell you Jenkins master and slave architecture. So guys, let's begin the topic. But before start the last session, we have to understand few points, which is what is Jenkins master and slave architecture and its use cases. So in Jenkins, we can build all our application on a single server as the requirement grows and changes we will come across many issues like what if there are thousand builds which need to be done what if different builds need to be done on different flavor of os in such cases the master slave architecture comes in the picture which takes care of all such odd requirements so let me show you the pdf slide so here you can see it's a jenkins master and slave architecture pdf and first point comes in our mind is what is Jenkins master. So Jenkins master act as uh, to schedule the jobs, assign slaves and send bills to slave to execute the jobs. It will also monitor the slave status if it's online or offline and get back the build result response from the slave and display build result on the console output. Right. These are the responsibility done by the master. And if you talk about the slave, slave is a Java executable which receives the build instructions from the center master node. It hurts, uh, hears the request from the Jenkins master instance. The job of slave is to do as they are told, which involves including in, uh, executing the build job dispatched by the master. You can configure a project to always run on particular slave machine or a particular type of slave machine, or simply let Jenkins pick the next available slave. And slave can run on a variety of operating systems. So here you can see it is a picture where the Jenkins master is there and Jenkins slaves are there, right? So for example, there might be an application which need to be built on Ubuntu operating system, right? And there is another application that needs to be built on CentOS node. So as a solution, we can have two slave nodes, one with Ubuntu install and another with CentOS install, and build the build the respective application on these servers using Jenkins master slave architecture. Right. So in this demonstration, I will teach you how to make Jenkins master slave node architecture. So let's begin the lab session. So let me open my Google Chrome first so that I can take the access of my Jenkins dashboard. So as you can see, this is my Vimware workstation and currently I have two virtual machines. This is uh, worker two and this is server one. Right. So on one VM is based on RHL nine and another one VM is based on Ubuntu Linux. So let me go one by one on both machine and show you the OS release version and IP address first. So this is the first machine. Let me go with CAD etc OS release OS release. So this is Redder Enterprise Linux 9.2 and if we check the IP address IP address of this machine is 192.168.229.154. Right. Similarly, I'll go back on the other machine. This is Ubuntu machine. I'm logging with root user and etc OS release. So here you can see that is Ubuntu 22.04.2 long-term support LTS. And if I check the IP address of this machine, IP is 229.133, right? This is the public IP. That was a private one. So I'll go with the public one, 22.229.133. Okay. So let me take the access of Ubuntu machine from ValOS. So I'll open a new tab. I type SSH 192.168.229.133. Uh, 133 are you sure yes I am to give the root password that is I have given and now in my first tab this is RHEL OS operating system RHEL machine server 1 and that is my Ubuntu machine clear so now I will configure this Ubuntu machine worker 2 as a Jenkins slave node so I have already installed Jenkins on my master server that is on root server 1 on on this Linux box. If you don't know how to install Jenkins, please go to my previous video where I have mentioned how you can install Jenkins in the Jenkins playlist. So you can config go with Jenkins hyphen hyphen version. So Jenkins is there. Yep, 2.401.3. So let me take the web console of my Jenkins dashboard from my web browser and we will start our first project. So I am here 192.34. admin password I'm logging just look at it right so this is my dashboard so here I'm logging with my credential and this is my Jenkins dashboard so let's start with the first tab which is configured Jenkins slave machine so for that one I'll come back on my Ubuntu machine that is worker 02 so first of all we need to install Java on slave node 
So let's let's be update the packages first and then install Java using apt get command, apt get update. So this command will update the all latest packages. So let it be complete first, then we will install the Java, right? Okay. Let it be complete. Done. Now let me check whether Java is available or not. Java hyphen hyphen version. So you can see that Java not found. We can go with apt install default JRE Java runtime environment to install the Java. So copy the same thing, paste, and press enter. Some process is going on. Waiting for cache to update. Okay. Let it be complete. Let me stop one more time. Okay. Let it be reboot the machine. I reboot the worker too. Oh, let me reset. Now let me connect one more time. Let me check for the pitchability. Okay. Yeah, network is there. So let me connect one more time. So wait for a such connection. Yeah. So I have already updated the package. Let's install the default diary. Are you sure to continue? Say yes. So you can see that package is going to be installed. So after the successful installation, we will check the Java version again with the Java hyphen hyphen version command line, right? So let it be complete. Ninety-eight percent done. Okay, unpacking. Ninety-seven percent done. Done. Okay, now time to check, verify one more time with Java iPhone iPhone version. Yep, Java is successfully installed. Now let's make Jenkins remote working directory where all Jenkins related operation will be take place. So I said MKDIR Jenkins and sorry, that was wrong. Give me one second, type to her. Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S. Okay, and you can see currently it's no content available inside Jenkins, right? It's currently black. So let's move to the next step, which is configure Jenkins master server, right? So I'm back on my Jenkins dashboard. Let it be come back on the same. I'm here. I'm in back my Jenkins dashboard. So first of all, uh, go to the manage Jenkins. Click on the node and clouds. And here you can see only one built-in node, right? Built-in node is there, which is my RHL 9 node. So let's add my slave machine, click on new node, give the node name, I said slave, slave underscore node, make it permanent agent, and ODE, okay, create, now description, first of all give the nice description, meaningful description, so this is Jenkins slave node, okay. Now, number of executor. So, if you talk about the executor, so that means uh, I am going with the one. You can change it the value as per your requirement. Executor number means the maximum number of con 
concurrent builds that Jenkins may perform on this node. So I'll go with the one. So you can change on your own way. Then we have a remote root directory. Remote root directory, it means an agent's node to have a directory dedicated to Jenkins. You specify the path to this directory on the agent. It is based to use an absolute path. This should be a path local onto the agent machine. So there is no need for this path to be visible from the controller. So I'll go with the J-E-N-K-I-N-S. This is the same path I have created on side my own slave machine, right? Slash Jenkins. Label. Label is important. Next, we need to define the label. Label means a simple tag that are used to group multiple agents into one logical group. So I'll give the name is S-L-A-V-E. It could be anything. But remember, later on, we require this name. So I'll go with this one, slave. Then uses, use cases. So uses means uh, you, can, uh, you can go with the first one as much as possible, as much as possible node. Otherwise, you can go only build with the label extension. So I'll go with the one one. Then launch method. We have a two launch method. Launch agent via SH and launch agent via connecting it to the controller. Right. So for the simplicity, I'll go with the SH method. SH is more common method for using the Linux environment. So launch, go with the SSH. Now we need to give the host and username and host name and the user credentials of my Ubuntu machine. That is a slave machine, right? So IP address, so IP address of my Ubuntu machine is 192.168.229.133 and credentials. So currently I don't have a credentials, none is there. Let it be add first. So add, click on Jenkins, scroll down, go with the user and password. Even the end number options are there. Like what type of card you can go with the private key, secret file, certificate. So I go with the username and password. Username is that's root and scroll down, give the password. So whatever the password of my Ubuntu machine, I give the password of my root account description. Uh, slave no. Okay, that is sufficient. I just click add. So now you can see that I have a slave node credentials are here. I have successfully assigned. Now in the next part, host key verification strategy. Host key verification strategy means uh, this control how Jenkins file the SSH key present by the remote host while testing connected. So there is many options are available. Like if you can go with the uh, manually provide key, manually tested key verification strategy, non-verification, non-verifying strategy. So I'll go with the manual tested. I'll go with this one. That is uh, manually tested key verification strategy and. This is, uh, this, is the, this is the normal thing and I will go with the key, this agent, uh, this is the required for, for me, right? And uh, now we can leave require manual verification of initial connection, option as it is, right? Next part is availability, so keep this agent online as much as possible, so I'll go with that one. And uh, that is sufficient for the configuration of this Ubuntu machine as a slave server, I'll go with the save. Okay, as soon as I save, click launching. The progress is there, right? So slave node, it is there. Click on that one and we can go with the log. So you can read the log also. See, logs are there, right? Agent successfully connected and online. So if you got this message, agent successfully connected online, that means everything is okay, right? So uh, my node is successfully launched as a slave server. How to check and confirm as a slave server? Go back again on this machine, click on the node. So here you will find out two one, built-in node and slave node, right? Even if the dashboard, you can see, if I scroll down inside the build executor status, I have one built-in node as well as the slave node. Two nodes are there, right? So now move to the final step, which is launch project in Jenkins slave server. But before going to do that, if I go back again on my Linux box, let's see what happened. Earlier, when I run the ls command in Jenkins folder, let's see what happened. That is nothing. But now, see, remoting.jar and remoting folders are there, right? So let's move to the final to create a project and launch inside in the Jenkins slave server. So how we can do that? Go back on the your browser and create a project. So I'll go click on the new item. So I'll go with slave project, slave P-R-O-J-E-C-T project, go with the freestyle, click OK, right? Now, uh, first of all, I need to give the description. Uh, this is slave node P-R-O-J-E-C-T project. Scroll down and tick on this, restrict where the, this project can be run. 
So by default, build on this project may be executed. If I open that one, see that. By default, builds on of this project may be executed on any agent that are available and configured to accept my new build. So when this option is checked, you have the possibility to ensure that build of this project only occur on a certain agent or set of agents, right? So in my case, the label is slave. Remember the same name I have given over there once I configure the slave mode. So that is okay. That means I'm telling my Jenkins this project, you need to execute on this node, slave node. The label has slave. Scroll down, build step, add build step, go to the execute shell. Now, first of all, in the PWD command, then I say, okay, run the sleep command, just wait for 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Then I pass echo hi and uh, what to say hi uh, not hi p r o j e c t project e x e c u h execution time is dollar date and i want to redirect appended in uh, date underscore log dot txt that's sufficient right date for log dot txt so i said apply and now this the first of all the PWD command will work then it will wait for 15 seconds then this uh, message echo message with date command save it inside the date log or txt right so let me save and build this job so currently uh, i'm here let it be built now okay if i go with the dashboard you can see that it is building inside slave project in the slave node right so i can open this one I can open, I can go to the number of one build, even let me take the console output. So here you can see the console output working on slave node, even the workspace directory is there, right? So first of all, PWD command working, then sleep command that wait for 15 seconds, then the execution. So you can see that uh, the workspace location, workspace is slash Jenkins workspace and the view project name, in my case, slave project, right? So let's move to the Ubuntu machine and check the result inside Jenkins workspace and project name. So I'm back again on my VM. So I'll move to the Jenkins folder inside Jenkins. I have a workspace inside workspace. I have a project name and here I have a date log.txt. Perfect. Project execution time is Sunday 27, 5:51:59 a.m. So guys, this is how you can uh, build your machine as a Jenkins slave server and you can execute the project inside a particular slave node right so guys that's all about this demo i hope you will find this demo to be useful in some way i will be back in some other more interesting new articles on devops tool finally this is the end of this topic hopefully you enjoyed and learned new things soon i will come up with another new interesting topic till then keep practicing if you feel something i have missed or you wanted to know more something else please reach out to my social media links which is mentioned in the description and if you like this video please do not forget to like share and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon button for the latest update thanks for watching stay safe and goodbye